everybody, and welcome to episode 7 of the Fordcast. Yay, episode 7. <laughs> um, I am Rachel Leachman. I am Lauren Milberger. And this episode we're going to talk about Force 10 to Navarone. I thought it was Navarone. I thought it was Navarone. You say potato, I say potato? I, I'm assuming as much. Okay. You never know. Well, we can just call it Force Ten. Yeah, it's gonna be called Force Ten. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a, kind of I think the the first real post Star Wars movie that he's the lead. Yeah, he's he is very much. Yeah, the lead in this I was movie. I thought it was gonna be more of an ensemble piece, so I was quite surprised where much of the movie is just him and Robert Shaw. Yeah, who many people may know from Jaws. Sorry, sorry, I mentioned a shark movie. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. That was folly. I need to go back. Fuck that the was sharks. Big mistake on my part. I I apologize profusely for that. Uh, anywho. So this um, has no sharks in it? No, it does not. No. It has Nazis. It does. It's Daddy's first Nazi movie. Daddy's first Nazi. Oh, God. <laughs> Hoi. So yes, it's Harrison's first uh, movie uh being uh, the adversary to the Nazis. So it's a World War II movie. Yes, it is. And apparently, did not know this when I watched it, which could have helped, it is a sequel to The Guns of Navarone, which is a Gregory Peck and David Niven movie. Interesting. Why I was so confused at the beginning when they were in Italy, in Italy where uh, they talked about it at the beginning. Yeah. Which is the island of Navarone, right? I, I say never on, you say never on. That's right. Um, so it was confusing to me, to say the least, at the beginning of the movie, and now I see why. So The Guns of Navarone was apparently a very popular movie. It was in development hell for a while. These are not the same actors, obviously, and it was a very anticipated movie. It was, it was good. <laughs> so excited about this. Apparently um, so. Um, yeah. Um, well, because we're recording this um, on... April 24th, we also just want to say, like, hope you had a great May the 4th. Yes, and we will talk about what we did for May the 4th and the George Lucas talk show that we were going to. When we finally we go to it. Recording. Yes, so this is afterwards, but we will, in June, we'll talk about our experience on May the 4th. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so this movie is, uh, I liked it. It's, my summary is, like, short and sweet this time because I literally, like, it's, it's a war movie. I said I'd do the summary if you want. I mean, no. I mean, like, yeah. the thing is, it's just, it's a war movie. It's an, it's, it is. It's, it's definitely a war movie. And it felt very dated to me, in fact. Yeah, it, like, the thing about war movies are, like, they are all kind of, you know what happens. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, maybe, like, you, you see the schematics behind warfare, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's still a war movie. Like, I'm very much aware of the fact that, like, all right, we won. Yeah, you know that the Nazis are going to lose at the end of the movie. That's, that's yeah, that's a given. And so that's why it's like I love learning about the wars and everything, but I also am like, all right. Well, this was a movie that Harrison, another strategic movie like Heroes, that he particularly picked, not necessarily because of the script, but because it was going to be a big movie. Yeah, he wanted to be able to get to a point where he could be more choosy. And also, it was about the money. He knew that if he was doing a high-profile movie that had a large payday, that he felt that that would put him in that category and he would be considered more for these kinds of roles. Um, but he did think afterwards that it was a mistake. The movie did not do well. He did not get good notices in it. Um, it, it was not, I think, now it sounds like maybe it was not a... People were anticipating something because the, the original movie was such a big hit, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and then Robert Shaw died very shortly after, and he was unable to uh, even do dubbing, I found out, for the movie because he had passed away at 51. Poor Robert Shaw. Jaws but, got him. Yeah. But he and Harrison apparently got along really well, which is funny because Robert Shaw did not get along at all with Richard Dreyfus, They had a very, very, very big problem. Many people may know a lot of those stories. Uh, and they apparently made a pact to be at each other's funerals. It was a weird thing to 
pact to make. But Especially when one of you is 30 and the other one is 50 well, something. He's 30, like 35, but still, yeah, 35 and like 50. Um, unfortunately, Harrison, due to commitments, wasn't able to actually be at Robert Shaw's funeral. Oh. So it didn't work out. Um, but so there was that. But the two of them, I think, were really good together. You could tell that they had um, sort of, you know, they got along really well. Because even though it, it feels particularly at the beginning like an ensemble piece. It's very much two people. Yeah, but you were going through the summary, so. What? The summary. Oh, no. Like, that was that my, literally my thing is it was very much the typical war movie to me. And I, like like I said, I love war movies. I love World War II, but it was very much like, okay, we know the Germans aren't going to win. Yeah. But and, I, like, which I understand, like, these movies are more like, oh, look at the character. Look at the... But I just was it's like, about it's how. a war movie. It's about how they're successful. Yeah, but it's a war movie. Yeah. I, like, I'm not interested in the war side of World War II at all. I love learning, like, learning about, like, what was happening in the concentration camps, what was happening, like, yeah. between yeah. the Germans who wanted to say something but were too afraid to. And, like, I like learning about that stuff. I agree. Those but are it, my kind of World War II movies. Yeah. and the, like, This the is World, not my kind of World War II Exactly. Movie. The World War II that this movie depicts is, like, ah, oh, here's the American soldiers in Germany. And you're, like, great, cool, fun, don't care. It's a different kind of genre. It, it felt to me more like uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai or... Um, What's another good example? But it's a different kind of World War II movie. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, but pretty much, you know, our characters are sort of forced together. Harrison Ford's character is already supposed to go on a mission to blow up this bridge in Yugoslavia. But he's sort of put upon by these older, which is Robert Shaw and his friends. These are the two characters from the Guns of Navarone. Yeah. Um, because they need to assassinate a double agent. So they're sort of pushed on the mission to go with them. And then wackiness ensues. Wackiness ensues. Pretty much, and it the, turns into Harrison Ford and Robert Shaw being the two who were going yeah. to assassinate the man when it was just the Robert Shaw's character yeah. and the explosive scientist. There's guy. a lot of uh, pretty much is that it's um, Robert Shaw's character Mallory and then Miller, who's an explosive ex expert played by Edward Fox. This is directed by Guy Hamilton, who passed away this week actually. That we're filming really? this. Yeah, got buried in all the print stuff. Yeah. Uh, he was known for directing a lot of James Bond's mo James Bond movies, and uh, the two of them are sort of this sort of older team, and they get separated. But really, it's about all of them in this adventure, and then all these sort of mishaps keep happening. They keep getting sort of waylaid, and things get thrown in their path, um, and they they don't know that the character that they're there to assassinate actually is a double agent, even though they know it's him he says oh it wasn't me it's another guy with the same name and then they believe him yeah they went okay <laughs> and i'm like yeah that's yeah, how that works i mean they eventually figure it out and they murder him actually harrison ford's character murders him but i was like wow you took this guy's it was a lot of stupidity him. they get like captured multiple times and they're like they just trust people they're like, oh, you guys seem safe. And they get, I'm like, yeah. dudes, but every it's war. Every time they get got captured, I just rolled my eyes. I was like, again? Again? It's a, they're like, I'm going to trust this human being who I have no connection to, who I don't know what side they're on. I'm going to trust them that they're not going to kill me. And I'm like, that's, that's stupid. Yeah. It's very stupid. But it, it felt to me like a movie from 1965. Not <laughs> from 1978. It... It's sort of amazing to me. I was thinking about all the movies that sort of came out in the late 70s, and I was, like, expecting Bridget Bardot to, like, come in every second. It was just the way it was filmed. It was the way that it was written. All of these obstacles that they were throwing in them did not really seem believable. It just seemed like, oh, man, these guys are pretty bad at their job. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually they, they realize they don't have enough um, explosives, even after they steal some from Germans. Uh for, to blow up the bridge, they decide to blow up uh, something else to uh, get rid of the bridge, which is a dam. And which Harrison and Rob. Again, that's like a stupid idea. Yeah. To blow up a dam. I'm like. <sighs> and then my favorite part was how, again, old and dated the end felt. I think even. Here's the thing it's not just that it felt dated. It felt dated even for that time period. Yeah, like, I don't know. And some people think that the reason that Harrison got such maybe not great notices in the movie is because he's doing a very modern acting style. And everyone else in the movie... 
Oh, is they're all, all dramatic. They're shit. all very much doing sort of a '60s thing. Yeah, they're like what? Yeah. War? Yeah. I mean, it was interesting. Like, I I don't know. I, maybe I just can't not care about characters, but. Um, I, I got invested in some of the characters, and uh, and it was nice to see Harrison Ford battling Nazis. I cannot say no to Harrison Ford battling Nazis. Battling some Nazis. Yeah, but maybe we should just talk about his performance in it. Yeah, um, I thought he was great, but again, it's just like, it's a war movie. I'm just like not into like... It's hard when you're not particularly, you know, into it, I would say. I love, the thing is, I love history, and I love learning about that so time frame. But it's just like... The way this one was written was like, we're going to disregard all of history and just be like, how many times can we get these people captured? Well, they were like, kind of... To distract them from as, the goal of the movie. As they were going, they brought on George uh, McDonald Fraser to like rewrite the script. And it's funny because then Guy Hamilton brought him on to Superman. And he was one of the many directors and writers that sort of helped fix Superman before Richard Donner took it over. Which they should have done after this. Probably so. But uh, it was uh, it was a mistake that Harrison felt that he would not, maybe at the time, make again, was to pick something for the money only and not. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Harrison, uh, explain Hollywood homicide. Please. Not in it for the fucking Did he money. get a lot of money for Hollywood homicide? Well, I guess he got a lot of money in general, but... Uh, but no, I I actually didn't mind his performance so much in the movie. Um, I thought he was charming at times. He did he pointed, he had a pointing moment. So he, I mean, was, is this drink. the first? I don't think so. I'm sure he pointed in something else. I'm sure he's pointed in a lot of movies. I mean, he has, but up till now. Um, but the first scene to me, I thought he was not very good in. The first scene to me, I was like, something's up. He feels really awkward in this scene. Wasn't this right around his divorce? No, that's uh, 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 ha- uh, Hanover Street. Okay. Which we'll talk about a little bit. Not his, necessarily his personal life, but how certain things might have affected his, his performance in that. Um, I did feel at the beginning, like the first scene, he seemed really awkward to me. And I yeah. was, was like, hmm, not really, really vibing his performance here. I think he's definitely been better, and it's really interesting to see that even Harrison Ford, as an actor, has definitely progressed and gotten better and worked on his craft. But that first scene, I was like, wow, he's not really good in here. And it reminded me, because I've been reading a lot about the fact that the one thing that he really liked, and I think hinted to, at least from my perspective, that he became a better actor, was when he was able to have conversations with the director, when he wasn't just being told where to go because he was a bit player, but he could talk about where the character was and where he was coming from and go through the script and, you know, go through questions that he had with the director, that's when he feels comfortable. Yeah. So I wonder if it was an issue with perhaps the director. I mean, obviously the script was having problems that maybe he didn't feel comfortable with the director. Mm, He might not have. Yeah. We may never know. We may never know, and you know what? It's okay. I think it's okay if we may never know. (laughs) But uh, this was definitely a strategic film for him. It's a second back-to-back movie that he did with um, Angus Mc... I hope I say this right. Angus Mac... Innes? McGinnis? M-A-C-I-N-N-E-S. Mac Innes? Innes? McGinnis? Anyway, he was the gold leader in New Hope. And then he also will be a witness when we get to that. Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting as well. Do you have anything else to add to the um, Force 10 to Navarone? I think it's good to see for his performance in it. Yeah, it's very good to see for like him showing his range as an actor. Yeah, and having, I mean, I know you're skipping around, but me seeing them in order, it was just also interesting to go, oh, this is sort of, other than Han Solo, and really even then, like it's Luke's movie. This feels yeah. like the first time where he is actually like the lead of it because there's so many scenes with just him and Robert Shaw. Yeah, and they, and they have good very chemistry much together. So Rachel, you have a really funny story about your Indiana Jones shirt. I do. Is um, it so one of your Indiana Jones shirts. I only have one. It's okay. a Last Crusade shirt. Um, and it's really cool. I love my Indy shirt and I, I wore it when I was interning, like the day after I got it. And it was so funny because at UCB, everyone kind of knows, like, Rachel loves Harrison Ford. And there was this 
I'm so mad they took uh, one of the line guys took it down because he thought he thought he'd be funny and I'm still mad about it. Um, they had a picture that from the George Lucas talk show that they had cut out of Harrison Ford and taped it to the bathroom uh-huh. sign, and so I would always pet it every night before my shift. And then he replaced it with like Terry Withers' head, and I am so mad because now I don't get to pet Harrison Ford. But um, so I was like, they all kind of know like Rachel loves Harrison Ford, and so I was in my Indiana Jones shirt. And, like, towards the end of the night, for some reason, I kept getting, oh, is that your favorite Indiana Jones movie? Hey, you seen that movie? Do you know there's a fifth one coming out? And it was, like, a bunch of guys just coming up to me, like, questioning me about you Indiana get Jones. You a lot. I think, I think I get it a lot because I don't, as bad as it sounds, I don't outwardly look like the girl who would like nerdy crap. Which I never get. I get that crap, too. Which, and so I think that's why a lot of guys are like, well, let me question her to death. Like, Ugh. Like, I am, like... Extremely nerdy. Last night, a man and I got in a fight about the difference between Patrick Bateman in the book and Patrick Bateman in the movie. Like, <laughs> I, like, have the weirdest conversations with people because I'm like, let me tell you my theories. And they're like, what? And it's, like, me being like, yeah, I was reading this book about this thing and this. And so I think, like, part of it is people don't look at me as the thing. And so I was wearing it. And it was so funny because one guy comes up to me and goes, do you know they're making a fifth Indiana Jones? Thinking, like, he was, like the knower of all knowledge yeah. and you just hear the one intern because it was when my one friend was still interning he walked by and goes ha it's funny that you said that to Rachel and I'm like <laughs> like it was like everyone was like it was very funny that they kept doing it to me and I'm like everyone here understands like yeah they're obviously new here you obviously don't know me if you're like oh dude some guy was like that's your favorite Indiana Jones I'm like no it's a cool fucking shirt and it's an Indiana Jones shirt like what do you want me to do I was like, my favorite Indiana Jones is obviously Raiders, but Last Crusade is also a great movie. God, people. But, yeah, so, and then I worked to, I, like, was like, I wonder if, like, my uh, new advanced class knows how nerdy I am, and then realized I wore it to, like, my first advanced class. I, like, wore my Indiana Jones shirt. I was like, yeah, I made my, uh, my, my nerdiness clear. How many shirts do you have with Harrison Ford on them? Oh, God. Um, I have my Han Solo shirt, I have my We're Home shirt, I have my Bessie shirt, I have my Indiana Jones shirt, I have my other Star Wars shirt. Um, yeah, I think I only have five. That's not bad. No, I think I have But five. that's still five more than I have. Yeah, I think I just have five. I feel like I now need to get some sort of Harrison Ford shirt. Yeah. Just oh, be- six. I'm sorry, I have my V-neck too. That's the new hope. Oh, okay. So I have six. I think that's it. Is I that think everyone on it, though? It's just the poster? Yes. Okay. Well, that's that, and there's another Star Wars shirt I have that's everybody. But so I... technically four that are just Harrison Ford. Okay. And if we're not doing, like, the everybody. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totes four, but... Yeah, I, I recently got crap at a uh, Doctor Who event. So I was like, I'm at a Doctor Who event. So clearly I know Clearly I'm a fan. And this guy wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt starts talking to me and is like, oh, so so you like Doctor Who? And I was like, yeah, I love Doctor Who. And he's like really surprised. And he looks over at the standby line and it just happens to be that a lot of people are in costume and wearing fezes and looking absolutely awesome. And he's like, well, how come you look like you and you don't look like them? I was like, you're standing here wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. He's like, yeah, but, uh, why are you, I don't know what exactly he said, and I was like, I think the people in this line are showing their passion for something, and I think it's great. Like, I'm here because I love it, and they're here that because they love it, and we're all expressing ourselves in the way that we want to express. But that's how they are. Anymore. And nowadays, that's how it goes. I guess. We'll talk more about stories like that later, too. Yeah, um, but before we go, because this episode's going to be a little shorter, but um, we want to talk about the books that are coming out. They haven't come out for us yet, but they will they be will, out. When these when air, air, they will have been out for a bit. But we want to remind you, if you don't know, uh, May 3rd, uh, Bloodlines by Claudia Gray, which is mostly about Leia, although Han is in the book, which is why we're mentioning it. Even though we love Leia, this really is a Harrison-oriented podcast. So we recommend that you read that, and we'll eventually be talking about it on the show. And then July 19th, uh, part of the Aftermath series. These are all, by the way, in canon books. If you're not 
familiar with what's happening means that they are within the canon universe of the movies right now so you can get some backstory or some in-between stuff uh, and it's called Life Debt because because it's about Chewie and Han and how Chewie and Han goes back to free the Wookiees because of Chewie's life that to him and it makes me real emotional because Han and Chewie are my favorite characters in Star Wars Chewie more so than Han but I love Han Really? Chewbacca is my favorite Star Wars character. I, I'm shocked. Chewie's my favorite. I mean, I get it. I understand it, and it it all makes sense. When I well, oh, I think it was because when I first saw it, and I, this is why I love the Ewoks too. When I first saw it, I was so little, and my mom wouldn't let me have pets. Mm-hmm. Like I have a bird named Sally. I've had her since I was three years old. But not pets with fur. No, and I yeah. love dogs and cats. Like I really wanted a dog and a cat. And so my mom, like, when I went and saw this movie, I saw this big furry thing. and was like, oh, my God. And I, like, fell in love with Chewbacca. That's why, like, when Chewbacca gets hurt, I was crying. And then when Han died, I was sobbing because, like, Han and Chewie to me are, like, one and the same. But, like, Chewie, like, yeah. means the No, I just me. assumed that Han was your favorite. I mean, I think I am a lot like Han Solo. Like, I want to be a hermit and trap so myself away. Chewie's your favorite so Chewie's because favorite he's your best more friend. Like Han. That's I think if, sweet. if I wasn't as much like Han as I am, I'm like a mix of Han and Leia, which I feel like a lot of people are, but I'm very much a mix of Han and Leia, and so that's why I love Chewie. I'm so mad they cut that hug between uh, Leia and Chewie. Oh, I don't Chewie. think it was part of the movie. No, they, there was a hug that they ended up cutting. I thought that was off camera. I'm I pretty sure that was off she camera. She was crying and i about it. Um, my understanding is we're talking about um, a scene on some of the DVD extras, which we'll talk about in more detail in another episode. But my understanding is that when they wrapped Carrie Fisher, she started crying. Aww. And that's what that's from, is she's, she's hugging whoever's in the Chewbacca costume. I don't know if it's Peter or if it's his stand-in. Um, and that, because they talked about that she was surprised that she got so emotional when she was done. Yeah, I related, I relate to that. I also cried when I hugged Chewbacca. Hey, even, even Prince William. Everyone loves Chewbacca. That's the thing. That's my favorite thing about Star Wars is that, like, when, like, Adam Driver, who straight up was like, I don't like hugging, was like, Chewbacca came out. And I was like, come here. Let me hug you. And I was like, I, oh, that's why I love Chewbacca. Because, like, Han, here's my, like, Han is like, you know he's going to be grumpy. Like, no matter what, you're like, that man is going to be a grump. And he's just going to be hate everything that he's doing. But Chewie is just like, oh, you just hug Chewie. Chewie will protect you forever. Ah, Chewbacca's so good. I love Chewbacca. I can't wait till we talk about this book. Oh my god, I am so excited. Because it's literally like the two things I love most about Star Wars is Han and Chewie. And that's all it is. Whereas I can't wait for the, the Leia book. Like, I cannot wait. Oh, I wait. mean, I'm so excited for Bloodlines. Because the, the snippet that we have seen... It's yes. about, like, little Ben and then Han being a dad, like, made they me let, cry. You all may know because you may have started reading it, but at the point in which we're recording this, they did preview about three or four chapters, I'm not sure, but the beginning yeah. of the book, and um, it has some really cute flashbacks of um, Han ben, being a good dad. Which we all knew he was, but we'll talk about more. Yeah. More about Fuck that you, later. Fuck you, Kylo Ren. So, so Bloodlines <laughs> is already out. It came out May 3rd. You yes. can get it anywhere. And then July 19th, Life Debt will come out. I'll and be we'll getting that for that. my mother's birthday. Yeah. And uh, next episode, we will be talking very briefly, because uh, Harrison has a cameo in Apocalypse Now, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and starring Martin Sheen and Marlon Brando. Yeah, and then we will... Have a special, special interview. Yes, with our theme song um, writer, musician, Steph Dunn. Yes, um, she's so nice. I've been emailing her, um, and so we're just going to... Sh- she's a big Harrison Ford fan, obviously. Yes. So we'll be talking with her about her career and also about her favorite movies of Harrison and Harrison in general. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be really great. Oh. But until then... Follow us on social media. Yeah, follow me on Rachel Leishman. I'm at Lauren Milberger on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And you can follow the Fordcast at Fordcast PC on Twitter. And the Fordcast Podcast on Tumblr. And yeah. And you can email us at the Fordcast Podcast at gmail.com. And there you guys go. And we will see you guys in two weeks. Enjoy Steph Dunn singing. <laughs>